Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be playing the worst tier 10 tanks in the game. So without further ado, let's find out exactly what they are. And if I'm going to decide that the worst comes down to their win ratio. So let's go towards the bottom of the list and see what vehicles I'm going to be playing today. Oh my lord, would it be any other tank, the FV215B, which in the last 30 days on the European server has an average win ratio of 43.36. Oh dear, this one's going to be a bit of a stinker to start the day off with. Now, I know this is a reward vehicle, but it's not really a reward vehicle. This vehicle used to be the tier 10 British heavy tank back in the day. And I guess the reason why it's got such a horrific win ratio is because it's basically just a bad Super Conqueror. Now, it does have minute advantages, such as 410 meters view range. It does also have really nice gun handling at 1.7 seconds aim time and such good dispersion values when you're moving at 0.1 and when you're turning the turret at 0.08 that you don't even really need vertical stabilizers on this tank. However... Its engine seems to be at the front. Its fuel tanks seem to be at the front. This thing gets set on fire so much that I'm actually using a fire extinguisher directive on this vehicle. And while I hardly ever use large repair kits, at least recently on my main account, I'm going to be using one on this vehicle because I just think it's so likely that I'm going to use my lose my ammo rack or my fuel tank in a single hit. Oh, dude, this is going to be painful. Look at all of those scary tanks we're against. All right, well, I'm going to kind of cop out a little bit here, and I'm going to decide that I'm going to make my way towards the north instead. Now, if I was in a Super Conqueror, going north would be absolutely wonderful on this map because I'd have 10 degrees of gun depression. I could be able to use that to rule the ridge lines. However, I don't have 10 degrees of gun depression. Does anyone else think that the, the uh, this tank kind of makes the VZ-55 look a little bit small from this angle? Oh, goodness. Uh, it's it's just so horrible when you've got literally a better vehicle just sitting behind you. Like, can we trade tanks, mate? Uh, you can have this one and I'll have your one. Absolutely no problem. So the FV215B, I think it's in the Bond store. Honestly, I don't even know because I've never had to buy this vehicle, at least on my main account, because I've had it since back in the day when it used to be the Tier 10 Heavy. And I would never buy this thing on my free-to-play account. I can think of 12,000 ways to spend bonds better than literally burning them on this vehicle. Literally. If you spend bonds on this tank, it's tantamount to burning them. Because, of course, this vehicle is also a huge cinder box of a vehicle that goes up in smoke with every other... Whoop, every other hit. So, if you do buy it, you're going to end up just burning your bonds anyway. So don't. You just blooming buy a Super Conqueror and put bond equipment on that instead. Use the bonds that you would to get this vehicle to put on the Super Conqueror and you're going to be happy. I guess the only good thing about this vehicle is that you do have that reward status so you can use any of your British heavy tank crews on this tank and also that you have got that extra crew training because it is a reward status vehicle, I believe. But it's still just totally not worth it. Absolutely, utterly, totally not worth it. Alright, so now that I've hopefully made it clear that you should never buy this tank, not in a million years, what can I actually do in it? Well, unfortunately, there's a Udez and a Kranvang who's around the corner. I could try and advance, but I'm probably just going to get clapped by some of the TDs that are at the back of the map there, especially the FB405. But in this stage of the game, what can we even do if we don't push? So I'm actually going to advance. I'm going to try and get on this corner, and I'm going to see if I can be able to side scrape. Unfortunately, this corner looks rather ugly, and I don't think I'm going to be able to expose myself too much. Whoa, they left. The Kranvang and the Udez have left. Are you kidding me? Either that or they've gone their way around there. And they must have left. Oh my lord, Artie. There's no way I get an Artie party kill in this game. I'm going to go with an HE shell. See if I can have a miracle pen. Okay, one of the only good things about this vehicle is the miracle pens on the Artie, of course, with the Hesh. No, the Hesh is actually really good on this vehicle. It's got 120 millimeters, just like the uh, Super Conqueror. Um, that's... Now dead. Guess he didn't quite make it into the dip, unfortunately. I guess he got caught out by a 121B who's clearly chilling up there. Udez makes his way out. Luckily, I have really good view range. But I don't have very good hull armor, and I don't have the space protection that the uh, Super Conqueror has on the front of the vehicle. So, yeah. 
That's the way it is. So my Amex 13105 is calling my uh, Visa 55 names. I guess because he just wants to chill back there. But really, can you blame him in this situation? So I'm down 10,000 hit points. I'm getting out spotted by a Udez. Um, this is pretty much FV215B City. Uh, the... the this map as well and this matchup it's pretty much as painful as it could possibly be for the start of this video today so it's been quite weird actually if you've been watching my entire series of playing kind of worst of vehicles you might have noticed i've actually been doing pretty well in them maybe today is going to be the day now that i've reached the pinnacle of the tech tree at tier 10 that everything's going to turn into a disaster possibly maybe can i just reverse see if i can find the disappearing Cranvan. He must have probably fallen back into the dip, or maybe he just went over into that position. If you've got the hill on this map, then you can even go over there and you're actually okay. This is just such a sad game, man. I have to sit here. We've been unable to push. All I've done is killed an RT or game. They're doing a very good job at camping. Maybe I should have gone into the valley and fought the T110E3s, and then I could have just cried in the valley instead of crying my way through this western flank. Oh my lord, this thing. This thing is just... Yeah, 43% average win ratio, boys and girls. So that means that for every player who can get 50% wins playing this tank, there must be a player out there who is getting, no way, 36% average win ratio in this vehicle. I guess maybe just no good players are actually playing it. Oh yeah, the mantlet can get penned by heat as well. So that's always fun. Um, hoping that I can just manage to do some damage with HE. Oh, yeah, my mantlet can just be penned with heat. Great. Great. And I've been caught by a leopard. Ooh, I actually bounced a heat round. Absolutely amazing. Maybe I can get into a position to shoot us 50B so I can actually maybe do more than 1,000 damage. Is he reloaded? That is pretty much the FV215B user experience. It is getting by far the worst average damage of any of the heavy tanks at tier 10. Do not buy this vehicle. You would com be a complete muppet to do so. So let's move on. That was the worst heavy tank in the game. By far the worst tier 10 as well. Let's move on to the worst medium tank, the T-62A. Oh my lord. What used to be the crown jewel of the Soviet tech tree, the original tier 10 soviet medium tank t62a is about as irrelevant in world of tanks as it can possibly get in 2022 and that is because wargaming have buffed the object 140 into a position <sighs> that was just get me out of here that's because wargaming have buffed the object 140 into a position where it's just flat out so much better Still, you, you can do okay in a T-62A. I, I guess you can still do okay in an FV-215B as well. Usually when you're just vastly better than your opponents and you can make up for the disparity in the raw statistics. So one of my most frequently asked questions back in the day always used to be, what is better, the Object 140 or the T-62A? And I would always say the T-62A had the better turret, the T-62A has slightly better gun handling, but the Object 140 had one degree of extra gun depression and it could go 10% faster forwards. And so the Object 140, even though it had the worst turret, I still feel was the better tank. And then Wargaming made so many changes to the Object 140 as the years went by. Firstly, they buffed the top of its turret armor, so it had pretty much the same kind of turret as a T-62A. Then they buffed the gun depression of the vehicle from 6 degrees up to 7 degrees. And they buffed the hull armor, so now the T-62A is kind of like this glass cannon, which is absolutely horrendous compared to the 140. And again, there's absolutely no reason to play this vehicle. If you really absolutely, utterly have to play something like a T-62A, just play the 430U. Then you have incredible hull armor, probably the same if not a better turret, and you've also got the extra alpha damage to boot. Sure, you don't have the gun handling. Sure, you don't have the great shell velocity and accuracy that the T-62A has. But I'd say the 430U is by far the better tank. This vehicle is no longer even in the tank tree anymore. It's a collector's tank. And so I don't think you can even... Do you get discounts on collector's tanks? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. 
but you're going to have to unlock a tier 10 Soviet tank to then be able to pony up the 6 million to be able to purchase this vehicle. But again, I, I, I think you'd be mad instead. Take that 6 million credits and spend them in 6 million other ways. You should go and get yourself an Object 140 and you'll literally just be playing a better vehicle. Nevertheless, maybe we can still do something in this game. Well, firstly, respect to the way that the enemies have played. I like their aggressive play there. My 430U wants to go above. Um, I don't have intuition on this vehicle, so I can't switch out to a heat round here. But that's not necessary, as the 907 on the enemy team just gives me their lower plate. Again, the 907 is pretty much just a better version of the T-62A. Wow, th that guy's actually just going in. Well, we have to go then. We have to go. Let's go then, dude. I'll play with you. I'll play with you. This is fine. We can do this. I'll play with you for the uh, 268 version 4. That's fine. Man, that guy's got cojones. So I'm going to have to go with him as well. That's for sure. Wow, look at him. He's just tanking everything like an absolute boss. Wow. I mean, it must be nice to play a vehicle that actually kind of has some kind of armor and can just ram its opponents to death. Unlike a T-62A. Oh, that was, that was nearly very bad. If I'd missed that shot... But let's not think about the ifs. Let's think about what's actually happening. And that is the T-62A is actually getting clapping. Well, it was until then. I shouldn't have really uh, just driven out in front of that leopard. I should try and make use of my turret right now. Maybe the leopard will think I'm stupid and come back. That's what I'm going to pretend is that I'm just playing like an idiot on purpose. Okay. Okay. Well, the 121 could get me here. Which also, by the way, the 121, it's a joke how much better that vehicle is than this one. I should have aimed that a little bit lower. That was a misplay by me. Wish I had, uh, again, wish I had some heat right now for him. But not from that angle. I don't need heat from that angle. All right, my team is trying to push through there. And what I'm trying to do is just try and keep going for this 1-2-1. One, one. Try and keep him honest. Should be able to finish him off. Okay, he's down. Looks like my team needs some help to go around the corner here. And, uh, yeah, there isn't really a tier 10 medium tank that isn't kind of good in this scenario when it comes to absolutely just clapping it out. I'm going to load uh, APCR around here, so I've got the improved shell velocity for the TVP. Um, kind of worried that my team aren't going to uh, follow me up right now. Uh, and I just got hit by a 430U because I'm spotted the entire time, and I guess the guy just came around the corner. Um, but hopefully I should be able to go hold down in this position and be able to farm up this TVP and friends. Oh, I hit him, but I didn't manage to actually damage him. Man, why are these games so fast today? Is that Amex 13105 going to get me? Luckily, he's actually running away. Perfect for me that he's running away in this situation. Got to be careful with the 430U, but also we've got to try and game this TVP out. This game's actually incredibly close. I've got to be careful here that I um, don't lose this one. When I say incredibly close, we're actually up by four tanks. But just hit points wise. Oh, no, 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 no. Gorilla comes around the corner in front of what I thought was four different vehicles and somehow manages to get away with it. Oh, man, if only I had some armor, right? If only I had some armor. Zero damage blocked in this game. I, I'm not saying that I tried to use my armor super intelligently, but that's just the bottom line with the T-62A. You are an inferior tank in most ways. And this is why a vehicle like this is just not getting played at least by good players who realize it's a trash tank. A sub 46% average win ratio. And while I could have played a little bit tighter in that last game and maybe not exposed so much of my hull armor, I really didn't expect that gorilla to drive around the corner in front of four or five vehicles. Still, whatever, we did about 2,500 damage. That's okay for me in a T-62A. All right, so we've played the worst heavy. We've played the worst medium. Why don't we play the worst light tank? which is actually the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, which is slightly worse than the Sheridan. And I'm kind of happy about that because I recently just played the, the Sheridan. Uh, I made a masterclass video on it, so I can get to enjoy the thrills of the German light tank. So the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, why is it the worst? Well, it kind of suffers in the same way that the Sheridan does, that it's a very large tank. And because it's a very large tank, that means that it's quite hard to actually keep it hidden because its camera rating is quite poor. So as you can see, I've done everything that I can to be able to boost up the camouflage of this vehicle. Bounty exhaust, put some camo on it. I've taken a field mod that improves its camo but lowers its view range. I've got a full concealment crew, brothers in arms, improved fence. Uh, and also a chocolate on this vehicle, which can actually get me up to 45% camo, which is not bad, with also 476 meters view range. 
However, if I did all of that on a manticore, I'd probably have something silly like 54% camo. And I'm also not as big as uh, a boat. And, and so that's really where this tank suffers. It can't hide in bushes like other light tanks. And it doesn't have the firepower that the, uh, the Sheridan has. So it can't really rely on trying to overpower other light tanks or even just be like a good damage support like that vehicle does. And so the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, it doesn't have an autoloader like a 13105. It doesn't have access to the derp gun or the firepower with the 105 that the Sheridan has. It, it doesn't have the armor or the sleek nature of the T100LT. And it sure as hell isn't an EBR bombing it around at 90 kilometers an hour. And it's not even a Manticore, which is one of the most sneaky light tanks and scales really, really well with Equipment 2.0. It is just the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen. Luckily, I'm going to end up using a Commander's Vision System, as we can see here. And I've got 476 meters view range, even without coated optics, and 45% camo, so I should be able to outspot my opponents here. So I'm going to just try and police the midridge. That's my plan. Oh my lord, I lost the T62A game. It's my fault. I shouldn't have exposed my Hull armor to the Griller. I should have been a little bit more calm and controlled in that game. Well played to the enemy team. Didn't expect the 430U, and I didn't expect the Griller, and I deserve to lose that one. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to make these win ratios even worse, right? That's what I'm trying to do right now. Did I just get spotted? Okay, yeah, because I'm a huge fat light tank. So, of course, I get spotted even though I'm in a bush by an M60. I really don't think I would have got spotted there if I was in something like a Manticore. And the M60 nearly just got a shot into us as well. I thought I was in a bush, but, you know, I'm trying to hide like a barn in a bush. This is where this thing struggles. And when it comes down to the gun, sure, it's the most accurate light tank. It's it's a very accurate light tank. But do you really want to have an accurate light tank that only hits for 320 when a vehicle like the Manticore is hitting for 390? Um, and that's really where this thing struggles. It doesn't... <sighs> Delivering the shots accurately, sure, it's great. Great fun that you can deliver your shots accurately. But as I've been saying with the Manticore. One of the reasons why that vehicle does so incredibly well is because the tank just hits hard. And then it doesn't matter that it's got a long reload because it just goes off and hides for a little while. I'm not sure this 13105 realized that he was still spotted, that all this TVP might be making a big mistake. He wanted to try and wait. He looked like he was hesitating, almost not expecting his sixth sense to go off there. So we get a shot into the TVP. Um, they're all on the beach. I'm just going to have to let them do that and try and keep spotting this position. That's what my plan is. Oh, he went up again. I'm just going to wait. He doesn't realize he's still spotted. He doesn't realize because it must have been because of my... Uh, must have been because of my gunner skill. He's still tracked up there. Otherwise, I would have spotted him when he moved. He doesn't want to fire at me when he's tracked. I'm still hitting him. I believe I am, at least. Or maybe he did fall back. Um, designated target is what I'm trying to say. I'm using a directive with designated target, which keeps my opponent spotted for an additional two seconds. So his sixth sense didn't reset. That is absolutely ridiculous that that TVP could literally just sit in the open stationary for that long and my team didn't get me any kind of assistance. Well, here is definitely the full cursed video that all of you probably wanted from this worst of series. I managed to get my way through the tier 6s. I managed to get my way through the tier 7s. I managed to get my way through the tier 8s, boys and girls. I'm going to wait for him to move before I shoot, because then he won't hit me. Um, I managed to get my way through the tier 9s. I, I, I haven't, I'm not managing to get my way through the tier 10s today. Or maybe I will. Maybe I can. Maybe I will. Oh, 13105 is going back up. TVP's. I'm not sure if he's sitting there. He is. He's actually way, way down on hit points. I don't think he's going to go back up into the bush. And I don't think they have any more people over here. So I'm actually just going to go drive over here. I'm pretty sure that 13105 is in those bushes. Unfortunately, it looks like the enemy have actually won the beach fight. It doesn't look like we had enough tanks with gun depression above. Uh, my Progetto's going to advance. I've got a magical two shots and zero assistance so far for a light tank. Um, my T92 needs to fall back. TVP is caught out by the Projet. 13105 manages to come across. I should really have intuition on this vehicle so I can load a Hesh. Uh, because the Hesh would be sweet. The Hesh would be sweet in this tank. I'm going to have to just keep hunting this, hunting this 13105. He's coming at me, isn't he? I think he's had enough of my 
Nice, the projector's going to get him there. I'll just fall back. Oh my god, the RT hit me just as I fired, so I missed my shot. Well, well played, RT. That's what your job is, right? Is to stun me, to slow my turret traverse, to stop me from being able to engage the 13105. Look, no excuses. That was an ugly shot by me. But, um, I really didn't expect that artillery shell. And I was so focused on trying to make the shell that I actually ended up missing it. And it cost me an extra 700 hit points. So thank you, Artie. But I tell you what, maybe what we can do is we can go on the hunt. I, I genuinely have no idea why I have zero spotting this game. How that TVP and that AMX could have just so casually uh, just sat in positions. But that's the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen way. Uh, you don't have the firepower... You don't have the scouting prowess. Sure, if you get into a favorable situation and you set your vehicle up, you can still do it, okay? Maybe I can kill this M60 first. Nice, now I can kill the RT. Now I can kill the RT. Okay, at least Quacky Baby Game Recovery is in effect. Can we get a Battle Hero medal? I know he's reloading. I'm going to start loading HE after this one. Where's the other RT gone? Should I go above or should I go below? I'm just going to go this way. I'm pretty sure the RT is going to hit me as I go around the corner because I can't go above because the SD2 could be able to get me. Oh, no. no! This literally is the worst video, dudes. Oh, so if you're wondering why I went uh, low and I didn't go high, it's because I expected if I went high that maybe there could be a mouse or an ST2. And sure, I could have gone and sat up here and fired an HE round against the T92 if I, w if I had some hit points and I wasn't so pressured. Well played to the Object 261. Nice kill. If you hadn't managed to get me, I would have probably been able to get... I would have been able to get maybe the triple artillery kill mission. Feels bad, man. Anyway, I get three kills. My team gets four kills. Rhein, Metall, Panzer, Wagen. All right. This is painful. This is painful. I've played the worst heavy. I had a horrible time. I played the worst medium. I did okay. I played the worst light tank and my team, well, they didn't want to shoot for my spots. Now I'm going to be playing in the worst tank destroyer, the Object 268. So why is the Object 268 the worst tank destroyer? Because it's kind of like this jack-of-all-trades master of none, whereas there are so many other vehicles that just compete so well with it. It's not fast like a gorilla, but it has a similar kind of gun. Sure, it gets a full-blooded selection of ammunition. It doesn't have armor like a 268 version 4, and it doesn't have high alpha damage like something along the lines of a Jagdpanzer 100 or an FV215B183. In this kind of a situation though, on Westfield Encounter, there might be hope for me. The real thing that I think I'm going to struggle with this game is going to be my shell velocity. Alright, there's a couple of ways to play this map. One way is to go and sit at the back of the map up here. The second way will be to go and sit down here and try to provide some fire towards the southern flank. And I think that's what I'm going to, uh, to, to do. Um, I'm going to say, hey lights, lights, if you spot the south, uh, I'll try and snipe. For you. Also, by going in towards the middle, um, I will also be able to get some shots up towards the north, which would be a plan. If you're wondering who the unique voice actor is, I don't know who it is specifically, but it's from a Murni event. How weird is it that Wargaming gave us special voice acting uh, from the Murni event? <sighs> okay, Mr. Gorilla. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, how funny is it that Wargaming gave us special voice acting from the Murney event, but they didn't give us special voice acting from the Warhammer event? Absolutely outrageous in my opinion. I would have loved to be able to get some of that special Warhammer voice acting, you know? Oh, this position's so nice for here. Yeah, boy. This is such a great position for just punishing any heavies that go and poke up there. And it can also allow um, you to get some shots towards the south as well. If my light tanks um, didn't just sit in... Ooh, 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 I need to shush because there is a TVP. Where's he going to go? 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 Ah, oh, I think that was my best chance. So let me talk about the 268 and the different kinds of ammunition that you have available. Your armor-piercing rounds are just your generic rounds. Your heat rounds have 390 millimeters of pen. And then you also have Hesh rounds available in this vehicle. I've got to just try and take a, have a go at this one-to-one. One. 
Oh, he's actually locked in place for me. Oh, how does that miss? Felt like that was on, but it wasn't fully aimed, to be fair. So the Hesh, uh, Hesh rounds, or HE rounds, I should say, on this vehicle actually have 90mm to pen and 1,100 alpha, which are absolutely gigantic. Well, this is actually looking like it could possibly be a game that might be winnable. I'm actually going to win a game on this video today. It's amazing, possibly. Let's not count my chickens until they've hatched, though. What's this T124 doing? What's that Manticore doing? I think the Manticore's going after our T100LT. I feel like I've got to try and support... No. I'm going to go for the 121 instead. I've got to fire. If I'm firing early, why did he come back up? I really didn't expect him to come back up. He came back up to try and shoot me. Okay, that building should protect me from the TVP. It won't protect me from the 121 for too long, though. Um, all right, looks like I should still be quite careful. I don't really want to just suck out and die after one shot. Uh, is that ST2 going to go and poke up on that ridge line? I don't think so. My light tank is down. My 13105 is going and being a damage dealer, which is good. It's probably what the 13105 should do. It should be a little bit of a damage dealer in a situation like this. But it definitely doesn't make my life easy towards the south. Should I try and blind fire this 121B? He was roughly about there. Roughly about here. I've had enough of him. Ah, not to be today. Oh, Lord. There's a Progetto out here as well. Okay, I think this game is just going to be one of those rounds where I just have to chill and wait. And the Manticore is going to keep trying to poke up and trying to find us. Okay, I've got to be really careful now because the... Now that we've lost that bat chat, they can actually advance all the way along there and they'll be able to absolutely wreck me if they do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop back so I've got some more buildings and I'm probably just going to have to look for shots on the uh, the Manticore if he does anything silly along here. Where is he? Well, he's not actually committing. He's doing a real good job with his vision. He's obviously got a vision system and he's um yeah just managing to spot me out and just ruin my game. Um, this game hasn't gone at all how I wanted it to. None of my games have really gone how I wanted them to today. I can't really find the top weak point on that T124. Got a few walls that I'm going to have to deal with here. Maybe I can go forward and see if I can catch this Manticore. Uh, maybe I can catch the TVP, actually. He's kind of sitting out in the open. Am I going to get some good luck? Finally. Man, the aim time on this vehicle is long, 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 long. Did you know that back in the day, this vehicle used to get 450 millimeters of heat pen? That's right, that was Soviet balance back in the day. What you could do with 450 heat pen was absolutely staggering. Um, it was actually outrageous. You could almost just auto-aim at an IS-7 and it would go in through the turret quite a lot of the time. Whee! You won't bother us anymore. No, he won't. At least one kill for me. What's up, Mr. Prejet? He's run out of my... He's actually not run out of my render. You know what, I've had enough of this man. To... I'm just going to HE pen him. I don't need the HE anymore. I'm going to go with AP. Maybe I should have just fired the HE. Well, thanks, mate. Don't think you probably expected to uh, catch that one from me. Shouldn't have been so hungry for that manticore. Should have let me get him with the HE shell, right? <laughs> oh, dear. 2,000 damage. Not exactly the round that we want for the Object 268, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure the 121 and the... Progetto are not going to be sitting up here. They're going to be sitting deep in the corner. And I don't really have the mobility to get over there, so I'm just hoping that one of them is going to push. But they're not. This is just going to be a case of watching a Cranvang and a Progetto get into a position to be able to actually hit the enemy tanks. Oh, maybe not. Not my day or my RNG today, boys and girls. Oh, that is a horrible, stinky game of World of Tanks. One kill, 2,000 damage doesn't really make up for the trash rounds previously. This is World of Tanks pain. I'm not streaming today, so I might as well boost that up. Just a, such a mediocre game for the 268. I probably could have aimed a little bit better. I definitely could have got a lot more lucky. Luckily, we do actually have a field mod. Um, I guess I'm going to improve the accuracy on a vehicle like this. Might help a little bit, even though the aim time did feel a little bit lackluster. All right, well, you know what? The video has been so awful today that why don't I play the worst self-propelled gun in the game? That's right, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm going to be playing with the T92 apparently because you know what, this video can't get any worse, so why don't I give you all live artillery gameplay? And I bet you I am going to end up on something like Himmelsdorf because it's just one of those kind of days for me. Um, Alright, so the T92, the biggest gun in the game, 
It used to be able to actually hit hard back in the day. Now artillery has been nerfed to a point where it's kind of this just more of an irritant. It used to be more of kind of like a hawk. Now it's just more of like a mosquito that just irritates you through stunning you and doing usually paltry amounts of damage. Although this one is still capable of doing definitely non paltry amounts of damage in the form of the AP round. 750 damage, 372 millimeters of pen. But the 372 pen is kind of irrelevant because it's more about the 240 millimeter caliber which means that if you hit any plate which is 79 millimeters thick or thinner then it's going to overmatch and that's why the AP rounds on this vehicle are so good. However, why would you risk having to hit the tank for only 750 damage when you could HE and stun for up to 30 seconds of stunning or you could go for the damaging shell which does 1420 and if you don't pen you're still going to do about 400 or 500 damage to your opponents. And if you miss, you've still got a little bit of splash opportunity as well. Um, yeah, this is just one of those World of Tanks realities. One of those World of Tanks realities. The Wargaming created these armor-piercing rounds, and I understand that they didn't want to make them overpowered. But really, armor-piercing rounds are incredibly underpowered in World of Tanks right now. I hardly ever get shot by AP, and if I do, it usually ends up ricocheting. And I guess that's why sometimes you don't realize why the enemy artillery aren't really doing very much. Talk about not doing very much. Hopefully I can get this 430. I'm going to take a swing at him because if I can double track, then maybe I can uh, get the full kill because he'd already used his repair kit. Unfortunately for me, my shell wasn't fully aimed and so I don't manage to get the, the tracking shot on the 430U and it's kind of just a little bit of a waste. Oh my word, what are you two little customers doing over here? Look at you. You all want to you wanna catch an arty shell? Arty shells are definitely usually things that you don't want to catch very often. Um, Alright, so I think I'm going to have to relocate slightly further towards the east so I can try and get shots on that leopard. And also, it's very clear that the west is going to fall, and I've just got to hope that my team win the town. And if they win the town, then that means that maybe I can make my way towards the east and still stay in this game. That's right, artillery, we all joke about them playing with one hand, and... At least they have to alternate that one hand between their keyboard and their mouse. Oh no, QB, the artillery jokes have already begun. Yes, 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 yes. That is some horrendous aim time. That's a lovely hit. He had 900 hit points when we last saw him. Now he's got 357, so I think I hit him for 500 there. It's always interesting that... An artillery like this, it does hit really hard, but it, it just doesn't seem to actually damage the kinds of tanks that you would want to consistently damage. Like a mouse, for example. Quite a hard tank to be able to get rid of. T92 will probably hit it for hardly anything. Whereas if you hit a Rhinoceronte, the kind of vehicle which probably doesn't need to be getting absolutely dumped on by Arty constantly, uh, yeah, it has a, has a bad day. This Leopard's a very cheeky guy, isn't he? Is he not going to get hit by the Fosh? That's Super Conqueror. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that looks like a good shot. That was not a good shot. That shell travel time was horrendous. Ah, that was a misplay by me. I guess I was just greedy thinking that maybe I can hit two vehicles at the same time. In the end, all that I really did is I just stopped the Progetto from being able to fight back for a little while. Yeah, you've got to make sure that you use the indicators up here to... to to know how much you have to lead your opponents and I didn't give any lead there so that was a really poor decision by me I'm going to tell my team that I'm engaging this 268 version 4 don't need to now, I'm going to see if I can get this leopard here, aim slightly behind him oh baby please hit oh only 373 I'm disappointed boys and girls I'm not going to lie, 373 feels incredibly low but luckily however um, looks like somebody followed it up and I got a little bit of stunning damage against him. A little bit more stunning damage, and I guess that's really the advantage of these stunning shells. Talk about stunning, I got a real bad feeling that actually my team have kind of gone quite aggressively down the western flank here. And then I'm going to end up in a situation where I could end up getting spotted by this FV215B. So I'm going to go into the dip, and maybe I can actually dump him over here. This could actually be great. Man, this dip is slowing me down a lot. Um... Come on, come on. Oh, no, I need the shot. I need the shot. I need the shot. Oh, I didn't quite get the shot in before he managed to get into safety. Maybe I can get a shot through here. Look for the angles. Use the G key. Gonna probably get wrecked. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
Here we go. Oh, there we go. That should save you, right? That can save you, right, 50B? That can save you, right, 50B? I'm going to ask for some help from my team. Nice, we actually saved the 50B. The bat check got the, got the frag in there. Okay. Maybe we can still win this game. Oh, no. No, my buddy, my pal managed to get shut down there. Okay, so maybe what I can do now that I've got rid of the FE215B is actually escape through the west. STB1, please push. STB1, please push. Nah, he's not going to push me, is he? All right, we've got some big old chonky heavies coming. Do I want to stun them or do I want to go for the damaging shell? Oh, I really need to escape from here. All right, I'm going to switch to a damaging shell. That's 1,420. Why is my tank so slow? Since when is this self-propelled gun so slow, ladies and gents? I guess that's probably why it's got one of the worst win ratios. Is because it's just so slow, right? But when I say one of the worst, let me correct myself. The worst win ratio. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to escape here. I don't have very good camo. I'm definitely going to get spotted. I'm not sure I've even got six cents. Uh, should I go for the Cranvong or should I go for the mouse right about now? I reckon I'm, yeah, I'm, I've, I've just got to fall back. I'm pretty sure the Artie's going to shoot me right now. If he doesn't, he's a silly sausage. Hopefully I can tank his shot. Oh, I'm not tanking that shot though. Why is this vehicle so slow? If I was playing any of the other self-propelled guns, I would be out of there. Okay, I'm just obviously showing my artillery inexperience. Why is this thing so slow? Oh my word, its power to weight ratio is 9? I had no idea this was not a vehicle that you could actually run away with. Wow. Wow. Okay, I just figured something out. This vehicle is horrendous probably because it's just so darn slow. I did not expect that, that this vehicle cannot actually run away. Uh, the GWE 100 has a 10 power to weight ratio, which definitely isn't great, but it it's definitely not 8.69. Wow, okay, well, we're learning new things every day. Um, I guess I should have just sat still and just seen my death coming. Oh, I tell you what, I feel like this video does feel like just like that. It feels like death, boys and girls. This was a horrendous session of World of Tanks in five of the worst tier 10 vehicles that I would thoroughly recommend you avoid all of them. They're just not competitive. And it's always interesting to me that we can have these vehicles in such horrid states for so many years in the game without war gaming addressing them. Now, I'm not suggesting that we need to have every tier 10 vehicle in World of Tanks really, really, really good. But then again, if that was the case, all of them would just be absolutely outrageous. But to have all of these vehicles in a position where they're just clearly not competitive and they're clearly underperforming to a point where they have abysmal win ratios then they become irrelevant and then that's an issue for wargaming because they're just letting content in their game not actually be useful interesting or even worthy of grinding towards and while you could argue the vehicles like the fe215b and the t62a are probably like that because they kind of retired in the game anyway why are they doing that with a vehicle like the Reimatile Panzerwagen? Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was possibly the most painful YouTube video I've ever had to make. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if you still play any of the vehicles that you saw in the video today. And do you enjoy them? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.